The Blue Eyes White Dragon is absolutely the most well-known Yu-Gi-Oh card ever. If you know something about Yu-Gi-Oh, you know about the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Used by Kaiba in the anime, this normal monster took over the game's image from the second it appeared on our screens. And, well, Konami isn't stupid, and decided to bank on the nostalgia and fan following by releasing a myriad of cards which directly or indirectly supported this powerful engine of destruction. However, quantity does not equal quality, and Blue Eyes is one of the archetypes which better exemplifies this rule. Wave after wave of support, Blue Eyes continued being an underwhelming deck year after year. So why is that? Is the archetype just irredeemably unplayable? And if so, how the hell did it win the World Championship in 2016? Well, join us today as we take a look at why Kaiba's Ace is not as strong as some think. Let's start where all the good stories do. At the beginning, Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon in the game's first set, and surprising to no one, features the first printing of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. At this time, the game was still in a very weird state, with extremely few playable cards and Blue Eyes barely sneaked in there. The format's extremely slow speed meant that just being able to summon a big 3000 attack beater could spell the end of the game, but more times than not was destroyed by the occasional monster removal effects that most playable cards of the format like Fissure facilitated. During this time, we also got the classic combo of Lord of D and the Flute of Summoning Dragon making Blue Eyes stick a lot easier than before, and making for a pretty neat goat format deck. During this time, we also received the Ritual Monster Paladin of White Dragon, a level 4 ritual which could be summoned with the White Dragon Ritual, a very by-the-numbers ritual spell with nothing special to it. Paladin is a surprisingly strong card for its time. As level 4, it's not hard to get the fodder for its ritual summon, and it has a very couple of good effects during its era. It can destroy a face-down monster to attacks without getting to flip it face up, dodging the omnipresent flip effects that plague this era. You can also tribute the Paladin in order to special summon the Blue-Eyes White Dragon straight from your hand or deck, but it couldn't attack that turn, truly ahead of its time. But not all was good during this period. As you should all know, the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie came out around this time, and its tie-in movie pack we received the Blue-Eyes Shiny Dragon. This big dragon with the original stats has a fairly strong effect, gaining 300 attack for each dragon in the grave, and negating any effects that target it. The issue, however, comes with its summoning method. You cannot bring it out through normal means, and it requires you to tribute the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon to summon itself from your hand, which by itself is kind of clunky and hard to achieve. But to add insult to injury, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon wasn't released until 2008, four years after Shiny Dragon. I think that kind of exemplifies the entire Blue Eyes situation pretty well. A little bit later in 2005, the deck got a couple of new toys in the form of Kaiba Man and Burst Dream of Destruction, which, while helping, did little in the way of giving the deck any relevance. And for a long, long while, that was all the anime favorite got in the way of support. It wouldn't be until 2008, during the 5Ds era, where we got our first actual good Blue Eyes card in the White Stone of Legend. This monster could search the original Blue Eyes White Dragon whenever it was sent to the graveyard, which could be often. It being a level 1 tuner made the card exceedingly valuable, allowing for interesting synchro builds of the deck. Nonetheless, the biggest impact this card had was buffing the Royal Magical Library Exodia decks thanks to the 2010's Cards of Consonants. This spell could discard any dragon tuner from your hand to draw two cards, and was pretty clearly designed to work with the White Stone of Legend, to the point that it's featured in the card's artwork, allowing you to draw two cards and then search for the Blue Eyes White Dragon. This was played in tandem with Traden, a spell which could discard Blue Eyes to draw two more cards. These spells worked wonders for Royal Magical Library strategies, which required a ton of non-once-per-turn spells in order to draw your entire deck. This made for a pretty impressive deck, capable of turboing Exodia by drawing through a whole bunch of spell effects. This engine, with cards of Considence and Traden, also saw a lot of success in Edison Format's Disaster Dragon deck. This deck sought to utilize the ability of the Blue-Eyes engine to speed up their deck in order to draw a mass amount of cards with Super Rejuvenation, since you spent most of your turn discarding dragons. Still, while the deck has found a lot of success in the modern Edison format landscape, at the time, it was anything but relevant. While 2011 saw the release of Malefic Blue-Eyes White Dragon, which is more of a Malefic monster than a Blue-Eyes one, it wouldn't be until 2013 when Konami decided to create what is probably their most sold structure deck to date in Saga of the Blue-Eyes White Dragon. This deck introduced some extremely powerful cards. We saw the first printing of the highly relevant Dragon Shrine, which found itself in a lot of Dragon decks since then. More importantly to us, we also got Maiden with Eyes of Blue, a level 1 light tuner which was able to summon Blue Eyes from anywhere when it was attacked or targeted by an effect. We also received our first Synchro, one of the deck's main focuses, in Azure Eyes Silver Dragon, which could protect all your dragons and summon back your Blue Eyes on the crackback. But not all of the cards in this deck were hits. We also got one honorary Eyes of Blue monster in Rider of the Stormwinds. This level 1 tuner is essentially a Union monster without the Union subtype. However, it can only be equipped to a normal monster, giving it piercing battle damage. A clunky, restricted battle phase boost. 
but at least you can equip it from your hand, unlike Union monsters which require themselves to be on the field. But even so, yeah, not exactly what Blue Eyes needed at the time. And to add insult to injury, the deck included a reprint of Monster Reborn, when the card was still banned. Still, these cards managed to make Blue Eyes a deck. Mind you, not a good deck, not even a decent deck, but a deck after all. And that pretty much concludes all of the relevant showings of the Blue Eyes White Dragon in 13 years. But as players would soon find out, this lack of relevance was set to change halfway through Arc 5. During the Pendulum era of the game, Konami gave a bunch of support to long forgotten archetypes, mainly for Dark's feature in the Arc 5 anime, like Ancient Gears and Gem Knights, but also for some of the player base's favorites. And yeah, as you were all thinking, it was the 2015's Clash of Rebellions where Red Eyes finally became a proper archetype. But well, proper is kind of an overstatement, mainly just giving Red Eyes Black Dragon the ability to be an actual deck instead of just vanilla with no supporting cards. Still, this was way more than what its Blue Eyes counterpart was capable of doing really solidifying which the superior dragon was at the time. However, this set included a warning of what was to come in the form of Melody of Awakening Dragon, designed to search out the Blue Eyes White Dragon and its support cards. Or at least that was the case for about a year. In 2016, Konami saw fit to allow Kaiba's Ace to truly be able to stand by itself as a deck with its own identity. With the release of 2016's Shining Victories, Blue Eyes White Dragon became a fully fledged archetype with a solid engine and very powerful boss monster. Firstly, we got the Eyes of Blue engine, a series of level 1 light tuner monsters that aimed to help bring out the original Blue Eyes White Dragon and the new set of big dragons. More importantly among these is Sage with Eyes of Blue, which allowed you to search a level 1 light tuner on normal summon. It also can just be discarded to target and send an effect monster control in order to summon a Blue Eyes from your deck. Sage is a very important piece in any and all Blue Eyes decks, giving you a powerful searching capability and the choice of bringing out any Blue Eyes straight from your deck with a very small cost. We also got a retrain of the by then very old White Stone of Legend with the White Stone of Ancients. This card is also a level 1 light tuner, but instead of searching Blue Eyes when it's sent to the grave, it can summon it from the deck during the end phase, and also recycle Blue Eyes monsters from your graveyard to your hand. While much more powerful than the original, this card didn't replace Stone of Legend, and the two found their sweet spot in all Blue Eyes brews, each with their upsides and downsides. We also got our first actually good retrain of the original Blue Eyes White Dragon in Dragon Spirit of White. This level 8 light dragon is always treated as a Blue Eyes monster, and as a normal monster while in the hand or grave. Also on summon, it's able to banish a spell or trap, and can also tribute itself as a quick effect to summon the original Blue Eyes from your hand, as long as your opponent controls a monster. But it was not only the main deck monsters we got, we also received a new fusion monster much easier to summon than the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and much stronger. Blue Eyes Twin Birch Dragon require two of the original Blue Eyes White Dragon to be fusion summoned with, but can also tribute them to summon itself from your action deck without fusing. This gave you a 3000 attack body that could attack two monsters each turn, but couldn't be destroyed by battle, and banished any monster that it couldn't destroy by battle. Most importantly amongst this wave of support was a synchro monster specifically designed to obliterate the current metagame. Blue Eyes Spear Dragon as level 9 light dragon synchro with 2500 attack and 3000 defense, the inverse of the original Blue Eyes stats. This card has a bunch of effects, each designed to beat a specific deck of its era. Let's go through them one at a time. Firstly, it has a continuous effect where neither player can special summon two or more monsters at the same time. Pretty clearly designed to make the stop to perform a pal the Magic Spectre decks and any deck making use of Soul Charge. Secondly, it can negate the activation of a card effect in the grave as a quick effect, which was made to stop the Burning Abyss decks and capable of halting graveyard effects like those of Pantheism of the Monarchs. Thirdly, it can tribute itself as a quick effect to summon one Light Dragon Singer monster from Yaksha deck, destroying it during the end phase. This would most commonly be either Black Rose Moonlit Dragon for disruption, Stardust Spark Dragon for generic protection and making it survive the turn, or just Azure Eyes Silver Dragon for protection and follow-up. So, how did Blue Eyes do with this crazy wave of new support? Not very good, honestly. While the deck did have a lot of powerful tools at its disposal, it still folded to Monarchs, Cosmo, and all Burning Abyss variants. Especially since most of the cards it received in the set were pure fodder. Cards like Master with Eyes of Blue and Protector with Eyes of Blue were just bad. Let's go through these one by one. Protector is a tuner that summons another level 1 light tuner from your hand. Then it allows you to send an effect monster you control to the grave in order to summon a blue eyes monster from your hand. On paper, this doesn't even seem that bad until you realize that for this card to actually be useful, you need to draw it together with another eyes of blue and a blue eyes monster you actually want to summon. 
That and the fact that going second, it'll do very little, as it can be interrupted much more easily than the other Eyes of Blue monsters. Next, Master with Eyes of Blues allows you to recover a level 1 light tuner from your graveyard on normal summon. Then, you can shuffle Master from your grave into your deck to send an effect mods you control to the grave in order to revive a Blue Eyes monster. Not exactly what you'd expect from a master, honestly. Summoning back the easy to summon monster in an archetype full of hard to summon ones just seems contradicting. Worst amongst these, however, is Priestess with Eyes of Blue. It has a variation of Maiden's effect, but instead of summoning Blue Eyes when targeted, it lets you send an effect monster you control to the grave in order to search up to two Blue Eyes monsters with different names. Then, while Priestess is in your grave, it allows you to shuffle back a Blue Eyes monster you control to summon or sell back. And I don't think anyone would love to spend the normal summon a monster that will only give you any value under very specific conditions. Continuing the Eyes of Blue theme, we also got the long awaited Blue Eyes Field spell in Malazium of White which didn't quite live up to its expectations. It just gives you an additional normal summon of an Eyes of Blue monster, and buffs the attack of one monster by sending a normal monster from anywhere to the graveyard. It also theoretically can search Burst Room of Destruction, but if you want to search for a worse Raigeki, be my guest. Lastly, the deck also received an equip spell in the form of Beacon of White. It's literally just a much worse symbol of heritage, being able to summon back a Blue Eyes monster, but with way too many restrictions to justify playing this unsearchable spell. And while some more support was on its way, what would follow is still considered one of the weirdest events in the game's history. Most of you will know that 2016 saw the release of the brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, The Dark Side of Dimensions. This was obviously a very big event with tons of marketing behind it. Brand new cards based on the original series, which all needed to hit the printers as soon as possible. And why did they need to be printed as soon as possible? Well, Konami really wanted to showcase the newly buffed Blue Eyes deck at that year's World Championship. And if they didn't release the cards for the TCG in time, the deck would be absent at the tournament. So there was a mad dash to print the Dark Side Dimensions movie pack, featuring a bunch of unplayable anime fan service cards. And also, one of the cards that pushed Blue Eyes into meta contention, Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, which is a level 8 Light Dragon monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, which cannot be normal summoner set. It can, however, summon itself out by revealing the original Blue Eyes White Dragon in your hand. Once on the board, it would be treated as the original, an effect that also applied while in the grave. Lastly, it could target and destroy one monster controlled by your opponent at the cost of not being able to attack that turn. This was the biggest boost in power Blue Eyes had ever gotten an easy to summon body that treats itself as blue eyes while also working as removal going second. The deck's clunkiness and issues while putting bodies in the field were quickly remedied with this extremely overtuned monster designed to push the deck over the edge. This meant you could much more easily access blue eyes spirit dragon or rank 8 plays like divine dragon lord Falgran. So that was it. The deck had everything it needed. It was blue eyes' time to finally shine which bent little because it still couldn't sneak into the meta. Blue Eyes became a rogue deck, which could sneak one or two tops from time to time, but wasn't the dominant force Konami had no doubt intended the deck to be. But this wasn't the end of Konami's scheming. Far from it. The World Championship was approaching, and they really wanted a certain deck to win. The 2016 World Championship format was weird. From the TCG side, Cosmo, an extremely dominant deck, was not legal in Japan, and as such would not be playable at all in Worlds. From the OCG side, structured decks at Okaipa had not yet been released in the West, and as such, ABC would not be playable at Worlds. Two of that year's strongest decks would be absent from the tournament, which restricted players' options. Not only that, but decks like Burning Abyss were heavily crippled in the OCG ban list, meaning you had to play a much weaker version of the archetype, only being able to run one Dante, Travel the Burning Abyss, and one Graf, Melabrancha, the Burning Abyss. You get the picture. What this extremely specific environment caused was the exact perfect condition for Blue Eyes to shine. And that it did, being the most represented deck in the tournament, with the finals being a mirror match between two Blue Eyes players. And well, the match was a sight to behold. The deck, while strong, was extremely inconsistent and fragile, and resulted in a sluggish finals where both players weren't able to get their decks going and actually bricked on their first turns. In the end, Konami achieved what it set out to do, make Blue Eyes White Dragon win the World Championship. Now, decks that win Worlds usually receive some restrictions on following ban lists, since they are obviously very strong strategies. However, if you look at the winning list, you'll notice that the only cards in it which were eventually hit are generic powerhouses like Maxi and Vanity's Emptiness, and no cards of the actual archetype were put on the list at all. I think that really goes to show just how not strong this deck actually was. While a decent strategy, it had huge issues that made the deck barely perform outside of the hyper-curated world's format. 
And indeed, while immediately after the world season, the deck saw a big rise in popularity, with even a few tops of premier events here and there, but nothing above being a rogue deck. With time, the deck's relevance continued to dwindle away, slowly being relegated to just a pet deck with no capability of winning against any decent strategy. The fact that the other Blue Eyes cards released together with the Blue Eyes Alternate White Dragon were just completely unplayable didn't help. Deep Eyes White Dragon was the worst amongst them. This card would summon itself when a Blue Eyes Monster Control was destroyed, then burn your opponent for 600 life points for each dragon with a different name in your grave. It also copied the attack of a dragon in your grave, since it originally has zero attack and defense. However, if the card is destroyed by a card effect, it destroys all monsters your opponent controls. This does nothing for any Blue Eyes deck, honestly. It provides some mediocre battle phase tricks, which the deck absolutely doesn't need if you're actually doing what the deck wants to do. Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon might sound familiar to you probably because you got paired up against at your locals and got weirded out by the fact it dealt double piercing damage and had a lot of protection. Still, while it was hard to out, it was also hard to summon, requiring chaos form and setup to bring it out. Still, it truly exemplifies what Blue Eyes is all about, summoning a big dragon that attacks a lot and ending your opponent. Lastly, the funniest of them all, Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. This upgraded version of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon could attack up to three times per battle phase and banish itself from the graveyard to protect something from targeting. While underwhelming and redundant, we will always remember this card for being revealed in the underside of a ferris wheel, a claim that very few cards can make. And after YCS Sydney 2017, the deck was completely forgotten about, overtaken by Infernoids, Zodiacs, and Metal Foes. This lack of presence in the metagame continued forever, and the deck has gotten zero tops ever since. However, it would certainly be foolish to not support one of the biggest fan favorite archetypes of all time, and as such, we received a few extremely powerful support cards later. Continuing the Legendary Collection series of products, we received a Legendary Collection Kaiba. This set featured a lot of reprints of cards Seto Kaiba used in the anime, like Ring of Destruction, the XYZ monsters, and the Virus cards. What we care about, however, are the new Blue Eyes cards that released in the set, namely the King of D and Dragon Revival Rhapsody. These retrains slash reimaginings of the original Lord of D and the Flute of Summoning Dragon were made to help bind together the theme, with Rhapsody being a double monster reborn with downsides and King of D being able to search Flute, Raspity, or even the Melody of Awakened Dragon. This was not good, not good at all. Giving the deck a level 4 dark monster that had no synergy with the rest of the support the deck had received made for quite an odd design decision, and it stuck out like a sore thumb. Needless to say, these cards were not played other than some experimentation on release. A little time later, when Konami decided to restructure the way their Megatons worked, they created a Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon as a promo card for the 2019 Gold Sarcophagus 10. While it's called Alternative, it's actually the best 3 Dragon Fusion you can play in a Blue Eyes deck, vastly outperforming the original Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. It has the same fusion requirement of the 3 original Blue Eyes, but you get a lot better bang for your buck. Firstly, it cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Secondly, you can target and destroy a card your opponent controls once per turn. And if you use Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon as a fusion material, you can target three cards instead of just one. This is the ultimate big bad dragon with a ton of attack, protection, and ability to blow stuff up. Throw in the fact it has artwork drawn by the late Kazuki Takahashi, this is truly the crown jewel of Blue Eyes fusions. And if you're wondering, the reason this card is not in Master Duel is specifically because it has art drawn by the creator, where they don't include any of those cards in the game. Then in the next year's Megatins, we saw the release of the two new Dark Magician slash Blue Eyes White Dragon support cards, Strength and Unity and Destined Rivals. Strength and Unity is a continuous spell which allows you to, when you ritual or fusion summon using Blue Eyes a Dark Magician, target and banish a card your opponent controls or in their grave. Later, you can send the continuous spell to the grave to add back or shuffle a level 7 or higher normal monster in your graveyard to your hand or deck. While a pretty decent effect, this card is not searchable, and odds are if you're summoning any fusion or ritual, you're already in a pretty good position and don't need this clunky spell to further those plays. Destined Rival is a normal trap card with a devastating effect. If you control either Dark Magician or Blue Eyes White Dragon, it negates the effects of all monsters your opponent controls until the end of the turn. I don't think I need to explain why a Dark Ruler No More you can activate during your opponent's turn is a strong effect, but sadly this trap card can be very bricky and hard to find, making for a subpar experience, especially since unlike Dark Ruler No More, this card can have its effect negated by monster effects. But that was not all. You see, for a while Konami was doing duelist packs set centered around specific anime characters, and with legendary duelist White Dragon Abyss we got a few support pieces, most of which are completely awful with the exception of Bingo Machine Go. This anime reference card allows you to find both your Blue Eyes monsters and the previously hard to search Blue Eyes spell and traps. 
And while an extremely expensive card release, it failed to make the deck any better than before its release. As a promo card in the pack, we received a very powerful consistency tool in Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon. On Special Summon, it allows you to search for any Ritual spell, normally Chaos Form, or Polymerization. Then during your end phase, it searches for a level 8 or higher dragon. Lastly, you can banish it from your grave to make all of your level 8 or higher dragons gain a thousand attack. This card does a lot all in one dragon. It can search enablers for Chaos Max and Fusion builds of the deck, search up follow up and even facilitate an O2K. Truly a strong retrain that sadly doesn't see much play nowadays. In the same set, we also got the extremely underwhelming, the ultimate creature of destruction. With a name like that, you'd expect something else and a fact that makes one of your blue eyes immune to pretty much anything for a turn. Yeah, it's cool, but if it wasn't for its ability to come back from the graveyard, it would have never seen plain blue eyes decks. And that theme persists with Rage with Eyes of Blue, which at the low, low cost of banishing face down, literally every card from your hand, field, and graveyard, allows you to summon the three original blue eyes white dragons from your deck, and only your deck, so you better not have any of them in your hand or graveyard, while also locking you out of summoning before and after activating the card. I mean, it could theoretically be used when going second as a one card O2K, but you could also just play your deck instead of relying on the literal definition of a glass cannon. But it wasn't all spells. We also received Blue Eyes Solid Dragon, able to summon the original Blue Eyes when your opponent activates a card, and also negates a face-up monster on its summon. Not really what the deck needed, and honestly a pretty bland card, not even really feeling like an actual Blue Eyes card with its boring art and effect. There's also a Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon, which had the same protection as Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon, and could switch all monsters when it controls the defense position, while also changing their defenses to zero and dealing piercing damage when it attacked. Actually, a pretty cool enabler for the Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon OTK, now being able to be a dedicated deck coupled with the Impiantation monsters in cool place with Shin Spy and Creature Swap. A couple of years after that, we got Battle of Chaos, a core booster set with a bunch of support for Dark Magician and Blue Eyes. We received Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon, a really easy to summon fusion monster that could dish out an OTK much more easily than past monsters. To facilitate bringing out this powerful card, we got Ultimate Fusion, a quick play spell that could bring it out while also recycling your resources and destroying your opponent's cards in the process. Most importantly, however, they released a pair of very strong monsters, Dictator of D and Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. The former could summon itself by sending the original Blue Eyes White Dragon from your deck or hand to the graveyard, then gives the ability to revive any Blue Eyes monster by discarding a card that mentions the original. This makes for a much better retrain of Lord of D than the King of D, seen play in pretty much all Blue Eyes brews now as it's the Blue Eyes Circular. The other card is a reference to Kaiba's Jet in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, and grants your other card's protection against destruction. It can also easily summon itself from your hand or grave at any time a card on either field is destroyed, making for incredible recursion as long as you have the original Blue Eyes on field or in the grave. Lastly, if it battles, it has the ability to target and return a card your opponent controls to the hand. This really changed the way the deck was built, making for a much more interesting control build, making use of Jet Dragon and in tandem with Skill Drain as a way to always have the best monster on the field. In this same set, we received Vision with Eyes of Blue. This continuous spell can summon any monster from your hand if you reveal a blue eyes white dragon when you activate it. It can then return a monster you control to the hand and summon any monster from your hand if the returned monster was the original blue eyes or a blue eyes monster if it wasn't. This sounds a lot better than it actually is. Sure, you can summon a blue eyes from your hand, but do you know what else can do that? Blue eyes all turn into white dragon, and it can do it by itself. The last card we got is True Light. This trap card acts as the counterpart to Dark Magician's Eternal Soul. It grants protection to the original blue eyes white dragon, and a way of searching for spells and traps, while also reviving your blue eyes. And yes, it also blows up your whole board if your opponent destroys it. While most of these support cards are very, very good, the deck is fundamentally flawed to the point where these cards existing doesn't really change the deck's position. It still relies on a normal monster for all of its plays, and plays a lot of high-level monsters that can't do anything in your hand by themselves, so you're prone to bricking. And a lot of their best cards have weird restrictions for no reasons, where they wouldn't even be good enough to see play if they didn't have these restrictions, and in fact had beneficial effects for getting destroyed. Now, we've made pretty clear that Blue Eyes was never actually a good deck, but that's not entirely true. Yes, that statement applies to the TCG, but not to Duel Links. Since the mobile game has a very large focus on the anime, it's only natural that Konami would dedicate a lot of effort towards making the most popular anime archetype playable. And so they did, with Blue Eyes being one of the best decks in the game's history. Originally, the deck was a decent-ish rogue strategy, making some funky plays using their very limited tools, including Cosmo Brain, 
which allowed the deck to not brick as much as it previously did. This coupled with the alternative evolution skill, which could transform a Blue Eyes White Dragon on the field into the Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon, giving you access to Blue Eyes' best card, but in an odd way. However, it seems that history repeated itself. As you might remember, Blue Eyes only became a relevant deck in the TCG when the Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon was released, and the exact same thing happened in Duel Links. While players only had access to one of them, they also received the skill Ultimate Dragons, which could, by revealing two Blue Eyes White Dragons in your hand, add one Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon to your extra deck, as well as Polymerization to your hand. This allowed you to end the game very quickly by facilitating the summon of one of Blue Eyes' most powerful fusions. Coupled with the aforementioned alternative, this made Blue Eyes pretty much the best deck in Duel Links for a good while sometimes even considered tier zero. This deck even got a lot of new toys with the release of Sage with Eyes of Blue, Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon, and the skill Blue Eyes Dimension, which allowed you to normal summon Blue Eyes without tributing, and facilitates bringing Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon out. However, time seems to be Kaiba's worst enemy, as new card releases and small ban list changes push Blue Eyes out of the metagame and into the pit of Dross that is low-ranked Duel Links. So, What's next for the deck? Can it have a future? Well, there's a lot to unpack here. Firstly, most anime decks get a steady flow of support cards. So you never know when Blue Eyes is going to win the next world championship off the back of a new busted support card in a fixed format. Still, the deck has a series of fundamental flaws which really tilt the scale against the deck's viability. For starters, it's a deck centered around a normal monster. This is very, very bad. Most decks centered around a specific monster make use of their powerful effects, like with Sky Striker Ace Ray and Eldritch the Golden Lord. Meanwhile, Blue Eyes White Dragon is essentially a 3k token. This means that the deck's main objective is to summon a monster that does little to advance the game state, other than be a big body with no effect. This issue carries on to the deck's consistency, since you need to see Blue Eyes White Dragon to play the deck, but the card itself does little to help you win, and even less in your hand. This has caused the deck to gain a well-deserved fame of being supremely inconsistent, and experiencing brick after brick. The deck also lacks cohesion. It's trying to do a bunch of very different things at once. First, cards that care about or are straight up called Blue Eyes White Dragon. Second, Blue Eyes cards. Third, cards that mention Blue Eyes White Dragon. Fourth, level 1 light tuners. Fifth, synchro summoning level 9 monsters. Sixth, fusion summoning. Seventh, ritual summoning Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon specifically. Well, you get the idea. For a deck with such a strong visual identity, it completely lacks a gameplay focus. While this can be a good thing, giving the deck a large variety of interesting directions to build towards, in this case it makes it feel loose and inconsistent with its objectives. On top of all of that, while it has strong cards, the deck lacks any sort of follow-up outside of Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, which, while very powerful, cannot carry the entire deck on its back, meaning that if your opponent beats your already fragile board, odds are you're out of the game then and there. And it's true, playing Blue Eyes is an exercise in patience and pure devotion. You most likely already know the deck isn't very good. You know it has a million different builds and all of them are mediocre, and you don't care, and that's fine. Blue is White Dragon doesn't need to be a meta deck. It doesn't need to be in all the top tables event after event. All it needs to do is summon cool dragons and screw the rules. So while yes, it utterly fails as a playable deck, which theoretically should be able to win, it succeeds as what it really should be, a love letter to fans devoted to one of anime's most iconic characters. So that's it, a pretty comprehensive history of the Blue Eyes White Dragon as a game piece, its few ups and its many downs, and its feeble identity as a deck. What are your thoughts on Blue Eyes as a deck? Think it will be playable again? Let me know in the comments and see you in the next video.